Hello everyone. Welcome to new content from the Equus Film and Arts Fest. I'm Julianne Neal, the host of the Equus Film and Arts Fest podcast and also the host for the Equus Film and Arts Fest Camden Tour Stop during our Camden Film Week every year. I'm really pleased to have the chance to sit down and speak with Wren Winfield, the director of Lady Longrider, the documentary about Bernice Indy, the extraordinary woman who spent more time in the saddle than just about anybody I know. I hope that you'll enjoy the conversation as much as I did. Lynn, welcome and thank you for speaking with me tonight. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, congratulations because the film is out and I'm so excited to have the chance to see it and for everyone else to see it too. I'm sure it was quite a process. Can we start out by talking about how and when you met Bernice? Yes, um, I met Bernice, well, First, I'll tell you how I, how I heard about her. So in 2007, I bought a Norwegian Fjord horse uh, to be my driving pony. And because Norwegian Fjords are slightly different than, than your usual horse breed, I joined an online sort of chat group about Fjords so that I could learn more about them. And in about Around 2008, this buzz of excitement went through the chat group and the, the, the subject matter of the email was the lady long rider chooses a Norwegian fjord as her pack horse. <laughs> And I thought, lady long rider, what's that? And so I looked up her website where she has a blog of her journeys and I learned that she was a single woman riding alone around America on horseback. And that was so outside of my comprehension, mm -hmm. so far from my wheelhouse, so to speak. I just couldn't imagine doing what she was doing. And so I sort of just sort of tucked that into the back of my mind and, and got on with my uh, life. Mm -hmm. And then, then in 2000 and 10, I, I went into a cafe, a local cafe in Texas, in Blanco, Texas, to meet a friend. And there on the front page of the newspaper was a photo of Bernice. And it said, the lady long rider camps out in Blanco, Texas. Wow. And I went, yeah, <laughs> I was, I was like, oh my God, I have to meet her. I have to meet her. I went out driving and looking for her, couldn't find her, couldn't find her. Um, I was disappointed, but I figured, you know, okay, all right, I, I missed her. But And then um, a few days later, I think, after seeing that, a friend who I had met on that Norwegian Fjord group, um, sent me a private email saying, did you hear that the Lady Long Rider had a tragedy oh, no. in Wimberley, which was Wimberley, Texas, was about uh, 40 miles from where I lived. And I got that email late at night. And so I woke up my husband and I said, oh, the Lady Long Rider had it. And he, would, he, he could not hear it. He said, I don't want to hear it because he could not hear anything sad or painful about horses. It would hurt him too much. Okay. So the next morning I said, do you remember when I woke you up? He said, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> so he went and did errands that day. And he called me from a town, a nearby town. And he said, you'll never believe who I just ran into. I said, who did you run into? And he said, the lady long rider. And he said, she's walking, she's leading her pack horse and uh, she's on this little back road. And mm -hmm. I said, go back and find her, find out where she's going to be tonight. And we're gonna take out food, water and go meet her. Wow. So he found out where she was gonna be. I gathered up chairs and human food and dog food and horse food and water and hay. And we went out and we found her. And she was already sort of settled in for the night on the shoulder of a little country road. And when our car pulled up, she jumped up. I jumped out of the car. I leapt into her arms. I had never met her. I started sobbing. And um, we spent the evening with her. And that evening changed my life. Mm. I, 
I asked her a lot of questions, but one of them was, how did you make this decision to live such a radical lifestyle? And she looked me straight in the eye with her piercing blue eyes. And she said, how do you make the decisions that you make about your life? Hmm. And I'm a pretty uh, self-determined person. But being asked that question made me realize that I could make even more radical decisions, even more self-determined decisions. Um, so that was, that was pretty amazing. And I felt like I didn't have enough time with her. I wanted more. Mm -hmm. I wanted more of her wisdom and the connection because she connects with people so instantly, so deeply. She just bypasses all of the small talk and gets right to the essence of life. Yeah. And I, I wanted more of that. So the next day I went out looking for her and I couldn't find her. Mm -hmm. And I was so disappointed. I was just almost devastated. And then I realized what the lesson was. The lesson was that if I couldn't find Bernice, I had to figure out what she meant to me and find those qualities in myself. What she meant to me was courageous, self-determined. And when I realized that, it changed my life. Mm. Well, I, I understand exactly. I mean, you connected with her in a day and I met her for the first, for the first time in Kentucky at the horse park. And I think I told you it was like a rock star is walking in. People were just in awe. And I was the same way. I'd never heard of a lady long rider. I didn't know what long riding was, but I watched her make these connections with people in, you know, a five minute conversation and nobody wanted her to stop talking. No, she is that powerful presence. So I can understand completely you know, how, how you felt. So how did that develop into you directing, producing a film? After meeting her, I thought, okay, somebody needs to make a film about her. And I had been a filmmaker in the past. Uh, I, and I didn't enjoy the process mm -hmm. and left that to become a healer. I became an acupuncturist and herbalist. And I tried to give this subject to another filmmaker and he had no, no interest in it at all. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of got on with my life and Bernice rode on with her life. Then everything changed in my life. My husband died um, and you see at the end of the, the film, my dedication to him. Mm -hmm. I dedicated the film to him. Um, so he died. I moved with my present husband to Santa Fe and brought with me my fjord oh. and one other horse. And, and life here in Santa Fe with horses was a lot more challenging than life was in Texas with horses. So I rehomed the horses. I took them all the way back to Texas and gave them to somebody. Three years later, I learned that that person had abandoned them oh, yeah. and I had to rescue them back. So my fjord was on the trailer coming back to me after three years, which was a miracle to get her back. It was a miracle. She was coming back to me after three years of being someone else's horse. And it made me start to think about Bernice again. Hmm. After all those years. So this was, tw it was 2018 that my fjord was coming back to me. I hadn't seen Bernice since 2010. And as my fjord was coming to me, I started thinking about Bernice and I thought, I wonder who, where she is, what she's up to. And so I looked her up and found out that she was maybe riding through Arizona and New Mexico. So I wrote to her from a Facebook account, I am very, 
social media averse and I don't have my own Facebook account. Actually, now I do, but there's nothing on it. And so I wrote to her from a Facebook account belonging to my mule. <laughs> I have a mule named Samson and I had a Facebook account called Secondhand Sam the Mule. Uh, and so I wrote to her and I said, uh, this is Ren Winfield. I met you back in 2010. I think you might be close to me. I would love to meet you again. And she wrote back and said, I'm seven miles south of you. In Madrid, she was in Madrid. She was staying at someone's house in Madrid, New Mexico, which is seven to 10 miles south of where I live. So we went and we met up. And again, I leapt out of the truck, leapt into her arms, started sobbing. And we spent about an hour together. And I said, I think it's time to make a documentary about you. And she said, yes, it is. You know, she had so many stories to tell. I, she's just a, a born storyteller. So how did you decide, how did you pare everything down enough to be able to just fit this into an hour long film? Well, Lisa Dearson told me to keep the film at 60 minutes or under. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I... I liked that guidance. I really appreciated that guidance, knowing that I would lose an audience if it was over. Right. And there are stories that I did record on video and chose to leave out. And, and part of it had to do with what I could find supporting photographs for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But another part of it was that I don't view this as a horse film it's not about horses and i don't think it's just for horse lovers i think of it as a i feel like bernice's journey is 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 a spiritual journey and we all are on a long ride to use her metaphor we're all on a long ride whatever long ride it is as she says it can be the long ride of motherhood or the long ride of our career or the long ride of our relationships and what she thinks is important and i agree is that we're devoted to our own long ride whatever long ride that might be and I felt like her hard earned wisdom on the road was applicable to anybody's journey through life, not just a journey on horseback. So the stories I chose, I hoped would be relatable for people who aren't just horse people. Now the story of the attack by the black stallion that's a real event, but it also, you know, sort of symbolizes any danger we can imagine. So I hoped it was also relatable to people who don't have horses and don't necessarily know how incredibly dangerous a stallion can be. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. I mean, it had yeah. to, it has, it does, it gets across, I'm sure. Um, and you know, that, that ride, all of that had to have been so frightening and, um, you know, just going into the trauma of, of her divorce and, you know, her, the, the illness and losing her hair and all the things, all those traumatic things that she went through prior to starting the rides. You know, I, I think people, people will relate to that, whether they're horse people or not. You're absolutely right. Um, and one of the things that I, that struck me, the Irwin family in Wyoming was instrumental in encouraging her to keep going in that beginning ride. And yes. I remember in the film, they're talking about Don and that he was living vicariously through her. And, I, you know, all the people that I saw her in contact with were, oh, I, I'd love to do what you do. I'd love, but really you know, I, how many of us really would, <laughs> you know, it sounds all beautiful and romantic and everything else, but how many of us really would love it? I, I don't know. How, how do you feel about that? Everybody assumes that I must want to also go on a long ride. And my answer is heck no. <laughs> I, 
I, <laughs> I never wanted to. I never wanted to. And I think my late husband, Joe, when he came and met Bernice with me and saw how profoundly moved I was by her. I mean, really meeting her rocked my world. It really did. I think he was worried for days. <laughs> really like, oh my God, she's going to want to go. On a long ride. But I, no way. No. Mm -mm. Two hours long enough for me. Four hours is pushing it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, what, if, if you would say that, if you would ask me how, Yes. Okay. Yes. Everybody I see pretty much lives vicariously through her. That is something she does for people. She carries their dreams. It's like when they meet her, they put their unlived dreams into her saddlebags and she rides off for them. Hmm. Um, and she's very aware of that too. If you would ask me, how, do, is there a way that I live vicariously through her? No, because I don't want to do what she's doing, but I'm profoundly inspired by her. And I hope that I challenge myself to find my true authentic being and get to feel like I have known myself the way she has known herself. Mm. Beautiful. That's not the same as living vicarious. Oh, thank right. you. You're absolutely right. And, and you just put into words what I couldn't, because that's kind of what I was trying to get at. I'll, you know, I, I couldn't, I would not want to do, I, like you, I would not want to do what she does, but the admiration and respect that I have for her and, and she, you know, well said, very well said. <laughs> now, are you a horse person also, or a dog person, or an animal lover in general? You said you have a fjord. It, do you still have your fjord? Yes, I do. I am absolutely a horse person, a dog person, an animal lover. In fact, I, I was editing, I was almost done with this film um, on, on Valentine's Day. And I had to pull myself away from editing to go out on a, on a Valentine's date with my husband. <laughs> as, as we were driving to our, our, the first part of our date, I was just crying and crying and crying. And it was because I was close to finishing. Mm. And I said to him, this film is one long love letter to all of her animals from me, from me and for her, expressing wow. for her, her love of her animals. And I said, I just hope that my love of Bernice also gets transmitted to the viewers of the film. Oh, definitely. It definitely does. So I don't know, do you, do you think it would have been the same if she had started the journey, instead of it being pride or if it was a different horse, do you think it would have been the same? No, I don't. Bernice has, like all of us horse people, yes, she can make the best out of any relationship with any horse. That said, she definitely has very special deeper connections to some of her horses than to others. I see. Yeah. So it wouldn't have been just any horse would have been okay. And that she would have bonded so profoundly. Pride was, he was a handful and, um, them, the relationship that, that, that came from that was very profound. She has since said, that despite the fact it broke her heart that she couldn't keep pride, she thinks it's better for pride that it, that his life unfolded the way it did. She said he was so crazy. He would have been dead by now or would have killed her. Uh. And the fact that he's happy and alive and just living the cushy life with his veterinarian is, <laughs> is why he's still alive. If he had stayed with her, it, it, it she, she thinks it would have been a disaster, yeah. Wow.
Uh, yeah, that probably makes sense. Yeah. Yes. And I just, I still cannot wrap my head around even just that first ride. I can't wrap my head around what she did. Um, yeah. I, I, I think her message, there were a couple of things that, that she said that it just struck me that she discovered who she was out there and she married her life and loves it. Was there, was that the message you were trying to get across or was there more what would you say the message would be for you? Okay. The message is, she says, I meet people and they tell me how they wish they could do something like I've done. And they talk about the limitations of their lives and the reasons why they couldn't. And I look at them through my eyes and I think, I wish you could see yourself through my eyes. I wish you could see how much more you are. That's the message that I cared about the most, that when Bernice gazes upon you, she sees you at your full potential. She sees you as the long rider that you are. Uh, you know, motherhood especially, um, something she would have never taken on she wasn't brave enough to take on that. And, um, and she, so the message, so the gift she has to give people is the idea that they are so much more than their limited self-concept. Mm. She transcended all of her limitations. She challenged herself to a degree that most of us could never even imagine challenging ourselves to. And when she met that challenge, she found out how much more she is. And she can see that in other people. So originally the title of the film was going to be how much more you are. Because I really see, this is not so much a film about Bernice and how great she is, but about how the wisdom she's gained and the insight is a gift to everybody out there who's open to her ideas. And the biggest gift she can give someone is a self-concept that's less limited than their original self-concept. Hmm. And the gift that you've given back to her is to be able to share that with so many more people than I think she ever would have been able to share it with. So what, what is your plan for, for the film moving forward? What, what happens next? It, it'll be showing for Briarfest, I'm, I'm guessing, on the online platform. Is there a release, national release? How are you doing all that? Well, um, people have told me that this is a film that will not get into some of the bigger important film festivals like Sundance and Toronto. Hmm. But I thought, why not try? Exactly. So I've submitted them and we'll see, we'll see what happens. Now both of both Sundance and Toronto really want a world premiere. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hold it back until we find out if, if it's been accepted. Sure. Um, and, you know, everybody says they don't take horse films. And I keep saying this isn't a horse film. This is a right. spiritual film. This is about the woman's journey to finding herself. And I mean, I don't mean like I'm calling Bernice the woman. It's Bernice's journey, but it's, it's the female journey right. to finding oneself. And you said that you had, had made films before, but that wasn't really a road that you were interested in going down again, but I'm so glad you did. And in this case, I'm so glad that, that you made the decision to go ahead and do that. Can you imagine doing any more now? Or was that the one shot and you're, you're done? <laughs> there is one more in me, oh. which I, which I won't give away right now. That's okay. But yes. <laughs> It is about horses. It is about horses. I'll say that. And um, I don't. I don't think I want to make more films. It's really. It's really. 
it's a huge effort and it takes me away from my horses. Mm -hmm. I just want to be with them riding. Um, I could go on and on. There's so many more films I could make with Bernice. Yeah. So I think there might be one more film <laughs> in me with, with Bernice, but it would be mostly the last chapter of the film called Spirit. That's where she shares her amazing concept of, of freedom. Freedom is life without fear. And how do you be fearless? How do you become fearless? You know you've got everything you need. Wow. That's about as spiritual as it can get. Mm -hmm. And that is what I am most interested in. Telling the story, her stories, I told for the viewer. It wasn't really what I was interested in. What I was interested in was the, the spiritual messages that she had to share. But it's the spirit chapter. It's the spirit chapter that that's where all the wisdom comes through. That's where a lot of the wisdom comes through. And that's, so I want to make another film about that. Now, do you have enough footage already or you got to go back and shoot some more? I have enough footage already. <laughs> I was going to say, I was kind of hoping for your sake that you had to shoot some more because I, any chance to be around her and talk to her a little bit, I'm sure, is, is always a plus. Well, um, do you, have you talked to her lately? I'm sure she's thrilled with the film, but have, have you had any contact with her since it came out? Yes. She sheltered in place with us for oh, three months. Wow. Yes. So yes, I've been talking to her all along. I've been talking to her all along. I've had her horses here. I've had her. So it's just been, it's been such a gift. That's phenomenal. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy for both of you on that count then because that, you know, the shelter in place thing was, was so hard. And um, I, as we start to come out of it and everything, I'm, I'm wishing all of you all the best with that. And so um, thank you very much for, for talking to me about everything. Is there anything else you'd like for everybody to know about the process or about the, the product once you got it all in place? Uh I guess I'd like to share that the film was made with iPhones. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that iPhones put the power in the hands of the people. Anybody can make something that's important to them. I guess there's one other thing I could say that um, will relate to Briarfest. After Bernice wrote her book, she took a book tour, and she drove all around the country in her 1969 Ford truck, pulling her horses in a trailer behind her. So her horses went on a book tour with her. Oh, and hanging, wow. yeah, and hanging from the rear view mirror of her 1969 truck was the Briar Fjord horse. <laughs> oh. Now that's pretty special. Rin, thank you so much for being with us tonight and um, for telling us a little bit more of the behind the scenes. Um, you've got a really special film there. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope everybody who watches the Briar Fest really loves the film. Mm -hmm.